Hello. Old friends, new friends. I'm back. Um, so I, n I noticed that in my analytics and all of that, that the story time stuff was really uh, well received. And like, you have to remember, I've been doing this for eight years. I could tell stories every day for eight years about different crazy things that happen in salons. So here's gonna be another one. And this is gonna be more of like a employer story um, than it is a client story. I have plenty of those. Um, today we're actually gonna be using the Wayne Goss eyeshadow palette. Um, it was gifted to me. I was so surprised I was not gonna get this. I don't shop with Beautylish because of uh, many reasons. Not, uh, I wasn't shopping with them before Jeffree Star. Um, but reasons I really don't want to get into. But anyways, um, so we're going to use that and see how his makeup works. I have a couple of his brushes, but I did not buy them off of Beautylish. I bought them off of um, some an app where you can buy like used stuff, but someone was selling a, supposedly a bunch of Wayne Goss brushes and uh, I was like, well, I'd like to try one and, and not having to buy it from Beautylish makes it even that much better. Um, so, yes, and them being, and them still supporting him is, uh, was the, just the, cake on top. Um, is mommy? Yes, honey. It's mommy. Um, um so um, the story I wanted to talk to you guys about is my very first nail salon that I ever worked at. Um, it was called, <laughs> never mind. I can't tell you what it's called. Um, I, she was actually my nail tech before she was my employer. And she convinced me, like I was working at a hospital here as a financial counselor at a hospital here in Utah. And although I really did like my job, I was really not sick of it. I was just burned out. I had freaking foundation in my hair. I was burned out. I was, I'd had enough. Be right back. So she convinced me, and we've been talking for a while about if I was happy with my job and things that I was doing. And I was like, you know, it's not that I'm unhappy, it's I'm just burned out. I don't, and I told her I really do enjoy working with people, but not in that capacity, you know, because my job at the University of Utah Hospital was, was uh, going and trying to collect payment. Otherwise, I would help them apply for Medicaid or Medicare or charity through the, the hospital. But anyway, so she talked to me and she's like, well, well, you really like nails. Like you've been coming here forever and you've been getting your nails done since you were 16. Why don't you go to nail school? And I kind of laughed because not because i thought it was like impossible but i was like do you guys even make money like am i gonna go to nail school and then just be poor um because i was a single mom with two kids so it's not like i really had the option to follow some kind of pipe dream and then it not work out and maybe just be like oh well it didn't work let me just figure something else out no i needed to still be able to feed and clothe my children and have a roof over their heads and take care of them while I was going to nail school. So she convinced me. So I worked during the day and I went to nail school at night. She was really hard with kids, like really hard. I feel like I never saw them, um, even though it was only four months. 
but they did it part time. I feel like I never saw them. <clears throat> because by the time I got home from school, they were sleeping. And the only time I ever saw them was when I would drop them off at school or wake them up for school because we lived in walking distance of their uh, elementary school. So they would walk to school and it was just, it was a really rough four months. So once it was finally over, I was, I was like, I didn't go through all this. I didn't put my kids through all this for this to fail. So I worked seven days a week from open to close for an entire year. And I told myself, if I cannot make a living, a comfortable living doing this in a year, I'm done. I will go back to working at the hospital. I'm not going to um, struggle. I'm not going to not have money to buy my kids clothes and things like that. So, but I said, in order to do that, I have to make sure I give this my all. And I did. I gave it every ounce of me. And, um, and I did it. I built a full clientele. By the time that year was over, I was making really, really good money. We were very, very comfortable. I was happy. I was really happy. I had achieved the goal that I had set for myself, which is being self-sufficient, doing something that I enjoyed. And I went to work for her because she told me, as soon as you're done, you're welcome to come and work here. And I was like, really? That's awesome. Like, I already have a job offer. I don't have to do anything. You know, I don't have to go out searching and or anything, you know. And so I went and worked for her and I worked there. I was her second employee. And I worked for her for five years. The first couple were really hard because like the first probably about six months were really, really difficult because I wasn't making any money. We were living entirely off of our savings and we had nothing. We had no room to spend anything on anything other than necessities. And it really sucked. Um, but I could see the light at the end of the tunnel because I was starting to get clients coming back. I was starting to see bigger tips. I was starting to see bigger paychecks. I was, you know, and so I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I just knew we had to make it through hell to get to heaven, you know? And, um, finally that point came. And at the end of that year, I cut my hours down. I, instead of working seven days a week, I was working four and I was still making the same amount of money. Um, and then I cut it down to three and I was still making the same amount of money. And I was so happy. Um, and I thought, okay, well, this is just where I'm going to stay. I'm making great money. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm comfortable. I'm at the top of the list as far as like a lot of salons do like priority booking lists or, you know, if, if you get the first walk-ins, if you're the first person that arrives, stuff like that. Well, this salon did a priority booking list. So the person that was earning the most in the salon was the priority booker. So if I didn't have a client and we got a walk-in, the client was mine. And I was the top of that booking list almost the entire time I worked there, so for five years, because I was the top earner in that salon. Um, and I think in some ways I did get like comfortable to where I got kind of cocky because I knew that I was one of the, one of the best, if not the best nail techs there. Um, my clients loved me and I was making her lots of money, but I didn't know one that she was underpaying every person that worked there. 
Um, most salons do a percentage rate if you want to do commission or they do booth where you just rent your space and you pay monthly. Well, she did commission and because most of the people she hired were new to the nail tech world, like they had never been nail techs before. They're just fresh out of school, like how I was and didn't know better. She started out us out at 30%. We were 30. She was 70, which is literally unheard of. I didn't know that though until like I wasn't there anymore, but we'll get to that. Um, but I had, I had, and then you had to earn a higher percentage. So by my second year, I was at 50% uh, commission. So we were 50, 50 because I had made enough. And so she had goals for us. If we didn't reach our goals, we didn't get a higher percentage. And if we didn't reach our goals for a certain amount of time, we got even less money. She'd pay us less. Um, which, like I said, we were new. We didn't know that that was not how it works. So, I'm comfortable, I'm happy, I'm making great money, I have a house. I had just bought myself a brand new car. Like, I was making okay money at the hospital, but I wasn't making this kind of money at the hospital. And so to be able to buy myself a brand new car, I mean, I, it was brand new, it had four miles when I bought it, um, was a real goal and accomplishment for me. Like, I was really proud of myself when I went in there and was able to buy that, you know? And I, I liked most of the girls that I worked with. As with any place where there's a lot of women, there's always drama, but for the most part, it was just fine. Oh no, I don't remember. And we all really liked each other. I thought that me and my boss were friends. Not just boss and uh, employee, but actual friends. And, you know, I was the lead. Um, I actually ended up getting my instructor's license while I was there so I could teach. Um, I did a lot of uh, things that I felt like were accomplishments while I was working there. And, okay, we're gonna get into this palette. And we're gonna start, do they have names? Nope, okay, so we're gonna go into number five, which is the middle one here, the brown. Um, and she was also ripping me off. As an instructor, she was also ripping me off. She was paying, she was charging students $5,500 and she would pay me a thousand. And I was literally the one that was there with them all the time by myself. But I didn't know how much she was charging them until one of the students got the guts to tell me herself, like, I don't remember why it came up, but she was like, I can't believe I'm paying this much here because like I looked into the nail schools and they don't even charge this much. And I was like, what, how much are you paying? And she told me and I was like, what? But then I was like, okay, it's her salon. She, you know, can do whatever she wants. This is her choice. It's not mine. I can't, what can I say? You know, so, um, So I told her, I did say something though. I did tell her that I no longer wanted to instruct that, uh, cause she was an instructor as well, the owner. She got her instructor's license after I started working there. And um, this color's pretty. They're blending really well. The only thing is, is some of these have a lot of shimmer. They don't have it when you swatch them. That's weird. Okay. Um, so then I slowly started feeling just like taken advantage of, which I really, really did not like. Okay, I'm taking number uh, four. I'm going to put that like above the crease because I really like that color. It's warmer. 
than the one I just put on, but we'll see what look we end up with. I didn't really have a plan. I just wanted to play with this palette. Um, so things were still fine. Everything, at least on my end, I thought everything was fine. Um, you know, there was some drama between girls, between me and girls, between girls and other girls. It, you know, like I said, with a salon where there's a lot of women, just women. We didn't have any guys or anything. Um, we were hoping to get one, but he decided not to work there because I thought, oh, that'll bring a different dynamic into the nail salon. That'll be nice. And he decided he didn't want, you know, he wanted to work somewhere else. Um, and... There was one nail tech in particular, me and her just, from the moment she started there. From the moment she started there, we just bumped heads. I don't know what it was. We just didn't, we just didn't get along. I don't know if you've ever met a person like that where it's just from the beginning, you guys are just not, you just know you're not, she's, not someone you're going to be friends with, right? Not not that you hate them, not that they're your enemy, not that you're going to be rude, but you're just like, okay, yeah, I couldn't, I would never be friends with this person outside of here. Um, so, I didn't know that she was going to be my fall. I was going to say my rise and fall, but she wasn't my rise. I was my rise. She was my fall. I don't, I didn't know that the entire time she was literally going every single day to the owner and telling her things about me. Um, I don't know what, I still to this day don't know what she was saying. Um, I don't know what she could have possibly been telling her that she couldn't have figured out for herself if it was true or not because the salon had cameras everywhere and they were cameras that had two-way audio so she could hear us and she could talk to us through them if she wanted to. Um, and remember, I had been her literally second employee. I worked at that salon when there was no clients. I sat there for days making no money because I saw the potential in that salon and I liked her as a person and I wanted to help see her business grow. Um, and one day, and so the owner of the salon worked there just like we did. She didn't really take a lot of clients. She took maybe just a couple of her regulars, but other than that, she didn't take any. And um, she didn't work Friday, um, Saturdays or, or anything, or Sundays, and the salon is open Saturdays and Sundays. We're gonna use this shade now. This I swatched last night. It's the only one I did swatch and I was like, what? She didn't work weekends and one day she came in on a Saturday and she didn't say anything, she just walked in. And I jokingly, I go, uh-oh, someone's in trouble. And it was me. Um, I was working on a client. She didn't say anything. She sat in her office the entire day. This was in the morning. She waited until I finished working on all of my clients till I finished cleaning this, my part of the salon. And I was six months pregnant with my son. By the way. And so I'm done with my day. I'm, I'm sitting downstairs in the break area and I'm getting ready to leave. And she comes downstairs and asks me if I can come upstairs so we can talk. And I was like, oh great, what did I do now? You know, thinking I'm gonna get a write up or she's gonna talk to me about something somebody said, but I didn't know what, I genuinely didn't have any clue what I could have done. I still to this day don't know why. Um. She took me into her office and she started bawling. And I'm just sitting there staring at her like, what the heck is going on? Why are, one, why are you crying? And like, what the heck's happening? And she says, I have to fire you. 
And I'm sitting there and I literally had no words. Well, I tell you, I, I think the, the whole working there and everything I had done for her ran through my mind in like 3.2 seconds. The fact that I sat there for days and, and months and probably a total of six months making maybe less than minimum wage because this one was so slow. Um, the fact that I became an instructor so that she could take students and I had already known that she was paying me way less than she should have been paying me. That I was the top earner at that salon still to that point. And she was firing me and I was six months pregnant. And so I literally just sat there and I stared at her because I was so confused. I was like, is this really happening? Like, I didn't even know what to say. And so being pregnant, I was like, I could feel the tears welling up. And I just said, okay. And I stood up and I left. And well, I stood up and I walked out of her office and I started to gather all my things. Cause I mean, I'd been working there for five years. So I had a lot of stuff that I would leave there. She just followed me around the salon while I got my things. And all of the girls were kind of like, what's going on? Cause nobody knew what was happening. And three of the girls that I was working with at the time had worked there almost as long as me. They started maybe six months or like a year after I did. So we'd worked together like for four years. Um, and they're just standing there and they're trying to ask me what's going on, but, but the owner was following me around. So I think it was so that I wouldn't say something. And, uh, I didn't cause a scene. I didn't anything. Cause like I said, I was pregnant. I just wanted to get out of there because I didn't want to give her the satisfaction of seeing me cry. Um, I grabbed my stuff. I was leaving. I was walking out and one of the girls the one that I'd been working with the longest come running out and she's like, what's going on? And I turned around and I just broke down and I said, she fired me. And she was like, why? And I said, I have no idea. She goes, you didn't ask. And I was like, I needed to get out of there as quickly as possible because I wasn't going to give her the satisfaction of seeing me cry. And meanwhile, the owner was crying. I mean, she wasn't just crying. She was like <laughs> crying, like couldn't even talk. It was so stupid. I'm like, you're leaving a six month pregnant woman with no job and you're crying. I, is this a ba little bit backwards here? Like, aren't I supposed to be crying? But I was like, at this point, it doesn't even matter. I had been kind of the last like four months so unhappy there that it didn't really matter anymore. Um, we were getting fed up of having to buy our own products and her taking a cut from that, you know, because she, she would charge and she would still take a cut from the stuff that we bought. So after that, one of the other girls that I worked with came running out and she said, what happened? And I couldn't talk at that point. I was crying so hard because I was like, what am I going to do? This is the only salon I've ever worked at. I don't know anything else. Where am I going to go? You know, I'm six months pregnant and I, no one's going to want to hire me pregnant because they, they're going to know I'm going to have to leave on maternity leave. Like, <clears throat> and so the other girl told her, that my boss had just hired, fired me. And she was like, what? And they both went in and they quit. And she started crying even more because I don't think she, I think she thought something like that could happen. I don't know what is all, I think it's from the from the brow products, but I got little black specks all over my freaking nose. 
Um, I think she thought something like that could happen, but I don't think she thought it would have happened like that. I think she thought that they would stay and then just eventually end up quitting because she knew how close me and those two girls were. And I was like, no, don't do that for me. You guys are making money here and you guys need to make a living. And they were like, no, we're not happy here either. Like we're literally buying our own like stuff to make do nail designs. And she's taking you know, 40 to 70% of, of that. And so we're out of here. And that was probably one of the hardest things that I ever went through. After I left, like literally, like physically, I mean, like I like walked away um, and got my car and went home. And at the time, he was just my boyfriend. I went home and told him, um, that I had just gotten fired and he knew, you know, I was pregnant, so he didn't want to stress me out. And he's like, it's fine. I got us. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You know, and I was crying and I just couldn't believe it. Like that had become like my second home. I was going to miss my client. I was going to miss my clients. I was going to miss like the girls there. I was just so sad. And, um, she did it like that so that I wouldn't be able to warn any of my clients that I was leaving. And so when my clients would call and ask for me, and remember I had a full clientele, full. I couldn't take new clients unless I had a cancellation, which was rare. Um, when they would call to schedule appointments with me, she would tell them, she's no longer with us. That's all she would say. She wouldn't tell them, where I went or, you know, follow her on Instagram. You may be able to locate her. Nothing. That's all she'd say. And then she would offer to book them with someone else. And a lot of them found me on Instagram on their own. And a lot of them had my phone number because they had been with me for so long that we'd become friends. Um, and then I messaged my boss and I said, can you please tell, like, I didn't know she, at this point that she wasn't telling my clients where I was. I thought she was going to at least be nice enough to do that. I'm pregnant. Like, can you give them my number? Like I, I worked for you for five years and now you want me to start fresh and brand new. Like that's insane to me. Um, and I had messaged her and I was like, can you tell my clients where I'm like to message me on Instagram? And she ignored me. And I still had some, still some of the girls that were friends with me. So she had told them, oh, it's funny. She just messaged me asking me to tell her clients where she's going. She's over here grasping at straws. I like this palette, by the way. I think it's beautiful. He did a really great job. I mean, I think that the shimmer is, the shimmers are the ones that like got me the most, like this one, which I guess is number one. And then number six, I think those ones are like the prettiest, but they blend like stunning. Like they are gorgeous. All of them, they're blending beautifully. I can't wait to play with this one right here. Like this, I think is so pretty. I haven't even swatched this one. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Yeah, so that was how I was treated at a salon that I helped literally build from the ground up. Um, the first few months I was there, I played, I played bitch. I would go get them their nail polishes gels so that the the ones that had client the, like the owner so she wouldn't even have to get up i didn't have anything else to do so i i played her i was her bitch and she treated me like that too veronica can you get me number 27 veronica can you get me a buffer veronica can you get me a file veronica can you do this veronica can you do that and i did it because i was so happy to just be there and I, I was like, one day I'm gonna be as busy as her, you know? And 
yeah, it was just insane. The girls that left with me, the qu ended up quitting when I left or got fired. Um, I say left because it hurts me to say I got fired. Um, we ended up opening our own place and that's a whole nother story. Cause let me tell you, we don't work together anymore. Um, but yeah, I still, that was two years ago, over two years ago. And I still don't know why I got fired. There was a lot more to it though. Like, um, there was girls there that I thought were my friends that were, uh, t texting each other when I got fired and someone sent me the messages and they were laughing. Like one of them put, oh my gosh, I can't believe Veronica got fired. And another one puts L, L like laughing my effing ass off. She'll be fine. Who cares? And I thought she was my friend. Like I got her the job there. Like physically got her the job there. And, uh, and then she just put like, ha 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 after that. And then the girl that sent me the message was like, and the, and her message was like, how can you not click that? She's six months pregnant. Like this isn't funny. And she was like, she'll be fine. Who cares? Like, I don't know why you're worried about it. You still have your job. It was, it was pretty devastating in the way that I felt so betrayed by my boss, by some of the girls there that I thought were my friends. It was just really hard. I cried for a long time. And then the girls that left with me called me that same day and said, can we come to your house? And I was like, well, my entire family's here eating dinner. Like, do you want to just meet me down the street? Cause there was a Starbucks, like literally like half a block away from my house. And they were like, yeah. So we went down there and that's when they told me we want to open our own place. We don't want to work for anyone else again. Are you in? I was like, yeah, let's do it. And that just turned into a total shit show. And that is a totally different story. So the next time that I get on here, you will hear that one. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful day, an amazing week, and a marvelous month. I love this palette. I think Wayne Goss killed it. I wish that he sold his products other places. I think that he would make more money. If he got into Nordstrom or Dillard's or Ulta, we know how I feel about Sephora, so we're not even going to say that. Um, and people would have more access to his products. But that's for Wayne Goss to decide. So guys, I will see you guys in the next video. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for sticking around when I'm not here and being patient with me. I genuinely appreciate it more than you guys will ever know. Until the next video. Bye.